Okay, we have a little bit of a special session uh, this morning. Um, a guest presenter, and uh, you might have, uh, if you were had tuned in a while back, uh, I interviewed Tricia, and uh, she consented to um, to lead a, a session. And so, uh, if you hadn't tuned in to that interview, uh, just a quick a, a little quick bio of Tricia. She's an instructor in our our lineage, the uh, Zhengma and Qing lineage of Tai Chi, and she's the former director of uh, the uh, Tai Chi Center in Madison, Wisconsin, which is one of the oldest and largest schools in the U.S. Uh, she's the founder of Tai Chi Health whose mission is to make the many benefits of Tai Chi accessible to people of all ages, abilities, and physical conditions. She taught Tai Chi and Qigong full-time from 1972 to 2015, and she's a pioneer in integrating Tai Chi into medical model exercise therapy and has enjoyed collaborating with health professionals for 40 years. And, and there's a lot more um, uh, that you might be interested in, but I would just uh, direct you to go to her website, taichihealth.com. Um, so um, without any further delay, uh, I give you Trisha Yu. Thank you, Kim. Thank you so much. I'll just get, get going. So today we're going to focus on um, body upright, basically one of Ben Lowe's five principles. And we'll start with this very short PowerPoint just because it's more efficient somehow to, to do that. And then we'll be doing some movement together. But let's have this beginning part while you're watching the PowerPoint also be part of your standing practice. So with the heels together. Right. Shift the weight. Step out. Turn on your heel. Come into center. And as we know, our Taiji practice can be our standing practice. And our Taiji practice can apply to every, every breath, every gesture, and every interaction. So routine and alignment in Taiji practice. But, but first of all, here's a picture of Jun Man Ching with my teacher, Lil Pei Jung. And Lil Pei Jung was about 20 years older than Jun Man Ching. And this picture was probably taken in the 50s or 60s. And while I was studying with Lil Pei Jung, he was the president of the uh, Taiwan Taiji Association, and I was a, a card carrying member. So Taiji means supreme ultimate, which we all are familiar with. And less common is that it's a ridge pole between connecting heaven and earth. And there's an energetic component to all of this. And we today will be focusing more on the physical aspect. But to start with, just think as you're practicing Taiji, you become a heaven earth human, a human who is connected to the greater whole beyond form and to the earth <clears throat> and maintaining that awareness um, as we practice and hopefully throughout our day. And so this ridge pole or this central axis is, you know, side to side, front and back, right in the center. And the top of that pole is the, the suspended head top, the crown or the byway hundred channels point. And then that goes down through the body to a point it's called the Hui Yin or the Yin Chow. And it's right between the genitals and the rectum. And so we have the heavens at the top, and then Yin Chao uh, is, is translated as earthly gate. And so we're connecting those two poles of our body 
as we're standing in alignment. Of course, in order to stand, we need to have a good root in our feet. And so another energy point, just like the, you know, the crown point and the uh, earthly gate, which are both acupuncture points, the bubbling spring is also an acupuncture point that, that energetically connects into the earth. But it's not actually touching the ground. It's behind the balls of the feet. And so Maggie Newman had taught these three points as reference points, and they are the, the really great for all the time when we're doing Tai Chi, whenever any weight is on a, a, well, I shouldn't say that, but whenever weight is on the whole foot. And that is the little, you know, the little toe side is touching and the big toe side and also the heel. And just for reference, most of the errors that we have and most of our knee misalignment is because we have too much weight on the inside of the foot. And so one of our focuses as we're practicing Taiji is to make sure that the weight is more on the little toe side in order is e evenly on the little toe side in order to maintain a good base of support for all of our movement. So here we are. We have this, the crown, the perineum going right into the ground. We have the bubbling wells. And then that central axis goes right through the three Dantians, the upper Dantian that relates more to things of the heaven of the non-physical realms beyond form, the middle Dantian, which relates you know, physically to the heart and lungs and then energetically to all things heart. And the lower Dantian, which is the focus of Taiji, so much that it's called the Dantian. And the lower Dantian, if you'd like to find that, you can just put a, you know, put your thumb on your navel and then just let your hand rest below it. And you're in the region there of the Dantian. And then put your other hand on your lower back, right behind it. And so you're in that region and that's, you know, the Dantian is located in a region, um, you know, it's basically a little above and in the middle of the pelvis. The lower Dantian physically is our physical center of mass. And so when we're moving, whenever we're moving, we can think of energetically, I'm moving and sinking the chi to the lower Dantian. Physically, you can also say that's my center of mass and, and the center of mass always needs to be over the base of support in order to you know, move efficiently. The linchpin to all of these energy, you know, energetic things is the pelvis. And when you were just having your hand on your lower back, your, 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 your hand is in right in this area here. And what we associate with the lower back often are these back bones of the pelvis. What we feel the most when we are, you know, trying to find our pelvis bones are these little, the ischial tuberosity, I think, these little things that stick out here. And this is where you can find them when you're putting your hand on the hip with your hands on the front of your body, that it, this is what you're touching. And so there's your pelvis, then here's your sacrum, and then the spine goes up there. This is the back of the pelvis. And then your tailbone or your coccyx, we want to keep the pelvis aligned so that the coccyx is facing um, the back of, you know, of the, your heel or between your heels. And so keeping the pelvis level is the, one of the absolute keys. And in order to keep your pelvis level, we need to be able to isolate it. So as you're standing there, just, you know, put your hands on your pelvis, wherever you want. And bring one side of the pelvis up and bring another side of the pelvis up, right? Um, then 
Tilt the pelvis forward, tilt the pelvis back. Okay, and we want to be able to isolate this. And this is what, anyway, we teach in, I've taught in every single beginning class forever because actually to do Tai Chi properly, to maintain your alignment, to maintain this relax, relax your lower back, the pelvis needs to be lined up and then that creates this, this vertical alignment that we've been uh, illustrating. So when we're moving then, we want to take all this into movement and we're going to, the center of mass then for her is right there about where her lower dantian is and the center of mass always needs to be over the base of support whether the base of support is, I'll go over here, whether the base of support is your feet are parallel, then your center of mass or your lower dantian will be right between your feet. And he's leaning forward a tad, but if he were completely upright, the center of mass is when the weight's 100% on one foot, it's right over the sole of that stable foot. And so these are the things that we can practice, especially as we stand. It's a little hard, even when you're moving slowly, but um, and in order to keep all of these things in alignment, we need to keep the pelvis stable and um, aligned. <clears throat> we'll be doing some movement together. We will not be doing kicks, but I wanted to illustrate this. So she's got her hands here on those protuberances in the front of the pelvis. And almost all of us, when we lift up into the golden cock or we do the kicks, our pelvises go out of alignment. We raise the side of the pelvis of the kicking leg. And so if you want to get yourself lined up as you kick, get a chair, touch the chair for balance, find a mirror, get, get the pelvis lined up. And what you'll find is that you won't be able to kick as high, but you will be aligned. And then gradually you can work on kicking higher. So, so far here, we're talking about standing alignment and then as you shift the weight, as you sink the weight into um, one foot or the other. Then there's the moving and the turning and what we like to, I like to call folding, that folding turning movement of basically it's of the pelvis. Somehow, and I'm not sure where, it was translated move from the waist. And so that has become doctrine. And so that's the word that is used when we're talking about turning. But FYI, the Chinese word for waist is dai. And dai means belt. And so this is actually a channel of, of, in, in the body. The English word for waist means the space below the ribs and above the hips. And so this is fraught with issues when we use that term because you can twist it and you can, you can be very much out of alignment when you're turning your waist. And so move from the yao. Yao is the word in Chinese. It's translated lower back and it's also uh, can be kidneys because the kidneys are right there in the lower back area. And just to see ways that you can palpate how you might, you know, how you might move or do the, the turning or the folding is to once again, put your hands on your lower back and then feel all your movement happening from your lower back. When one part moves, all parts move. When the, when the pelvis moves, the sacrum moves. When the sacrum moves, the tailbone moves. When the front of the tail, pelvis moves, the back of the pelvis moves. So that and what's inside of there is your center of mass and your lower dantian. So they're all kind of one unit. So you can move from the hands on the back, bring your hands up front like she had, 
right? Another place that you can move the pelvis from. Or you can just sense yourself moving from your center of mass or your lower dantian. Another thing, if you're lined up, you can start sensing that central axis and you barely turn that little laser beam of your central axis and the movement of your central axis will turn everything. It will turn your arms, it, it, will, it, it turns everything. So you kind of take your pick when you're um, practicing and maybe pick different focuses. So I like to say, turn from the yao, turn from the lower back. And so once again, when he's standing, he's lined up over his feet. When he's turning, you know, or folding here with this fold here in your pants, that's a good way to see if you're turning properly, keeping yourself lined up, then his weight right now is about here because he's not 100% on, on that one foot. So these are some of the things we're gonna be doing. And this is my dread here. Let me just get, oh no. Here we go. Stop sharing. Okay, yay. <clears throat> All right. So let's just review some of the things we've been focusing on. Okay, the first is this head suspended from above or suspended head top, the crown, right down, right through the body, the perineum, and down between your feet as we're standing. So that's, that's the central axis. And now the Okay, then the Dantians, there's one of the head, one of the heart, and the focus of Taiji is the lower Dantian, which relates more down to the legs, to the earth, and energetically the you know, safety and security, and, and it's always communicating. You can, lower Dantian's always communicating. Okay, now the hips. So place your hands on your hips and see now when you're going like this, there, ideally, <clears throat> in order to isolate this movement, there is no movement of your shoulders or your head. And so please get in front of a mirror and see if you can move your pelvis side to side, if you can move your pelvis back and forth. This is the linchpin for having your body upright, for energetically being relaxed, because if something's out of alignment, you're gonna be using muscles that you don't really wanna use while you're doing Tai Chi, okay? So practice that. Then as we shift side to side, kind of pick what speaks to you. Does it speak to you right now to, to really focus on this central axis and how you're creating this little laser beam, <clears throat> you know, from one bubbling well to the other? Or does it feel, it does feel more solid if you focus on your center of mass or your, your lower, your lower Dantian energetically, okay? And then your hips, always focusing on keeping your hips level as you move. All right, since hopefully you're still in your horse stance here, your beginning position, let's go ahead and go through some of these movements focusing on, oh, one more thing, the feet. Okay, let your, let your feet go in and out and then feel if you can find big toe, little toe, heel stays planted. And that can be the sole focus during the session is just on, on your feet being planted. 
Okay, beginning. Okay, so I'll focus a little bit on the, the axis for a little bit. Okay, now that axis right now, top of the head, bubbling well. Top of the head, right bubbling well. Step. Okay, right now, top of the head, directly between the feet, weights evenly distributed right now. Top of the head, more forward, more toward the left foot. Top of the head, bubbling well. All right, now let's focus more on the center of mass or the lower Dantian. Okay, right now, weight's evenly distributed. And this area here is just centered as well. Pelvis, pelvis lined even, this whole area relaxed. More weights forward. Okay, so just turn. Lower down Tian over sole of foot. Lower down Tian over sole of left foot. As we turn, the lower down Tian stays in the same place. In, space as we as it turns press lower down tian over back foot okay go ahead and be able to pick up your front foot pause there and the first thing that happens when we do that is we'll start to tense up in this in the whole pelvic area so I like to wiggle, you know, wiggle a little bit, relax. And push. Sink back again. And now here comes a movement that challenges everything having to do with body upright. And that's these, this extreme pigeon toed movement of the single whip. And this is where one hip goes, generally that hip will go out. So see so if you can find that body upright. Right now, the Dantian is right over the left foot. Right foot is planted though. All three points. Okay. Dantian over right foot. Turn, foot stays flat. Sometimes here, you want to kind of lift up the big toe side, but keep the foot flat. Dantian still over foot. Step. Okay, and then here, these are other exercises you can do, but practice. Keep, stay here, relax, stay aligned, move the foot. Only the leg moves, everything else stays in one place. Single whip. Okay. All right, let's go through it a little bit. Just focusing where you'd like to focus with your alignment and relaxation. Lift hands. Shoulder strike. White crane spreads its wings. Okay, this is a great one. Line up over the foot. 
And now turn the axis, turn the lower Dantian, foot rooted, step. Okay, and let's pause there for a moment. So we're here, just be able to pick up that foot without tensing here. You're just lined up, you're rooted, you're suspended, you're supported from above. You're rooted in the ground. Brush knee. Okay, now here's where, this is what is quite universal, this, okay? So brush knee, shift, sink, line up over the left foot, pick up the right foot, pause and stay there. Okay, back, strum the loop, pause there. Brush knee. And these are these wonderful turns. Sink back. Lined up. Step. And here it comes. Big turn of that axis. Check your front foot, no weight. Punch with drawing. Turn. Still lined up over this foot. Push. And now this other challenging one, just like single whip. Sink back. Turn. Okay. Keep the body upright. Keep the tailbone down. Don't lean forward. What you feel during these extreme movements is We've got everything lined up and we know how to fold and, and turn here at the yaw. So what happens is in the legs, when you're doing this, there's a, a, a like a ringing, a twisting of the, of the muscles. And then this is where you look, feel into the feet. Um, and there's actually a sense of corkscrewing down, okay? Oh dear, here we go. Cross hands. And close. Thank you.